Hey guys, welcome back to our tooling series for July. And uh, if you haven't watched the first two videos, they got us to where we are here, where we've already tooled the floral, we blocked in the horse. And so in this video, we're gonna go ahead and get to finishing up the horse. We're gonna do all the detail work on him and everything and get everything done in this video. And then we'll be able to decorative cut our floral. That was the only thing that I really left out of the last video was I didn't do any decorative cuts here. You certainly could, but I always try to kind of compartmentalize and we're fixing to use a swivel knife to get this hair looking more realistic whenever we could do the detail work there. And so I figured that's when I'll do my decorative cuts. And that way I've got the one tool in my hand. So in this video, we're gonna end up using uh, one of these tools here. You can certainly use, uh, Craft Tool makes a bunch of these, uh, just any kind of modeling tool. So they've got modeling spoons, they've got some with a little ball on the end, they've got some that are pointed, they've got hand undercut, they got a bunch of different styles. This one here is from Peter Main, and you can sure uh, contact him on Facebook, and uh, if he's got some, he'll certainly sell them to you. He makes them, so, I don't know how many how many he keeps in stock and all that, but you can get with him on those on on these if you want one of these. Um, I also mentioned in the last video that you can use these, which I got. I think they came from Hobby Lobby or some art store uh, like that, and basically they're just a sculptor's clay sculptor tools. So uh, if if you know somebody that does clay sculpture, you might be able to pick up some of these. This one's got like a little spoon on one end, um, and then a more of a diamond point. Uh, on this side and I don't use this one a whole lot uh, this one here I do use a lot for hair and feathers it's very sharp um, but I've buffed it down on a cloth buffing wheel with polishing compound really really good so it's really smooth there's no burrs on it and uh, it can certainly scratch the leather but I can also just uh, real lightly put some burnished lines in there which you'll see in a minute then this other end kind of looks like a dental tool I guess it has applications for sculpting. I don't use it much in leather work, but you can use that bend right there for certain things. So just get creative. Anything as far as modeling tools, any of those, they're usually really cheap and they're easy to get uh, uh, from from Tandy or anything like that. They sell a lot of those those things and they're certainly, certainly fine. I just really like this one. I bought it just because Peter Main made it and uh, I found that he was off. He had a few made or something um, years ago and I ended up buying one from him and I really, really like it and I use it a lot. And his just has a somewhat narrower uh, point here. Again, it's not very sharp. There's not any burrs. It's very, very smooth. And then this side's got a little spoon shape to it there. And it's really handy. I use I use both, both ends of this a lot. And I use this tool a lot for uh, any of our figure carving stuff that we do. And, um, and then we're also going to use a lot of pear shaders. And so certainly anything I do with the modeling spoons and stuff you can you can make a, a smooth pear shader work on stuff like that uh, and as you get into seeing what we're going to be doing to this guy as far as detail work and getting different contours uh, you'll you'll more than likely figure out that hey I can use this pear shader for that and this one for that that kind of thing so you'll kind of get a get an idea of, of what it looks like but those are the tools right there those are the pear shaders we're going to use and I'll be using a few other tools we're going to use some bevelers we're going to go back in and we're going to bevel all the rest of him now um, but we won't necessarily bevel as uh, just like we bevel whenever we bevel floral and stuff some some areas will bevel a little bit differently but we will use that and you can certainly use a smooth beveler here if you'd prefer to use smooth on your figure carving and checkered on your decorative carving or you know uh, floral carving that's fine too i'm just going to use one one beveler for the most part uh for the for the thing as far as uh, checkered stuff uh, i use checkered beveler so that's what i'm going to use and also, um, while we're doing the horse, I like to have an image, and unless you know what the critter is or what the thing is that you're figure carving, you know all the detail and all the stuff. I even, anytime you're drawing anything or doing anything like that, like a horse or a character, I like to have a reference photo so we can look at the different shadows and contours and shapes that we're working with. So I'm going to put the photograph that I took of him, uh, that I got this, this uh, pattern from, you know, where I traced out his, his basic shape for this project and I will put that photograph that I took I'll put that in a blog post on our website and there's going there's a link down in the description uh, of this video that you can go to to our website there just click that link it'll take you to our blog and there'll be an article where we embed the the uh, all our YouTube videos usually will embed them into a blog post on our website and so in that blog post you can see the uh, the original photograph of this horse and that'll kind of give you an idea of what what uh what needs to be shaded what shadow and that kind of stuff and we kind of look at it now like i said i did kind of add a bigger forelock on him i did add that 
to the to the image and kind of altered them up just a little bit but it, it's good to have a reference photo when you're especially when you're in a, when you're doing figure carving and that way you've got a uh, a good idea of what things are supposed to look like so we're going to go ahead and get started and we're going to get this uh get this guy kind of tooled up and start putting in some detail on him okay so we're going to get started and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start beveling and i'm going to start with his hair because i want the um i want his mane and his forelock to really show a difference between uh what's his actual you know coat and then what's the hair so we want to get some depth there so we'll bevel this for the most part just like we would um you know your floral so as you get back up into this thicker part of forelock you know you kind of start out a little deeper and then fade it out just like anything else And I learned that, especially with drawing, like doing graphite art, is like one of the biggest tricks with hair and stuff is not to try to create individual strands, um, obviously, because it's, for one, especially in the leather, you can't really tool individual strands. What you're trying to do is create uh, volume. You're trying to create the, the, the sections of hair. We'll put detail work for to kind of make the the strands in a minute but that's the whole deal is you just want to do the parts or the big chunks of it and so there's shape to hair it's not just a bunch of wispy strands a lot of times especially in a lot of the work people try to tool hair it ends up being just a ton of knife cuts you know a bunch of lines and uh people do it when they draw too it'll look like uh, spaghetti hair you know and it's really not it's um even someone with really straight hair, if you try to recreate that on paper, drawing it, it's really it's sections of hair. It's 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 got shape to it, and so that's really what you're trying to trying to draw. And so that's what we're doing here. We're uh, beveling these big chunks, and we'll come back in and add the the hair effect later. That. So now we've went ahead and we've backgrounded all this right where this floral comes in. I'm going to go ahead and bevel that background down right there because I want a very contrasting uh, blocking in, so to speak, of the horse. I want that to really look like this is really behind the back of his head so or his neck and, and ears and all that. So I'm going to re-bevel now that we've backgrounded. And it's going to match a little bit of your backgrounding down, but... It's up to you, but to me, it uh, it looks better that way. Um, it kind of gives, pulls him into the foreground subtly just a little bit. I mean, it is, it's very subtle, but I think it really helps, especially in figure carving, is to go around and really bevel that background around, or you know, his profile and everything, bevel all that again. And that way there's a nice distinction between him and the floral. We don't want him to blend into the floral, we want him to stand out of it. So. So I'm gonna go around him real quick and go ahead and do that everywhere. And somebody said too that there, what that line right there that I just beveled right here in his cheek, between the leaf and his, his uh, bridge of his, of his muzzle there that that line wasn't there if it wasn't i'm sorry i don't remember where i put my pattern but i'll check i'll check on that but um just if you're watching the video put that line in there um i had made mention not to forget to bevel it and somebody mentioned that it wasn't on the pattern so i apologize for that
Okay, got that kind of beveled. Now right here, these lines right here in this ear, if you look at the photo, you know, his ear, the horse's ear kind of cups around at the base. This is all pretty well exposed, but right here, you know, that's his, uh, going down into his ear. And so we're gonna bevel that just like we would a, a long line or a, a vine line. Start out a little deep right there at the base and then just kind of float that up. And then I'm looking here at his his nostril. We're gonna we're gonna do that with a small beveler. And again, if you would prefer to use checkered, I mean uh, smooth bevelers, you sure can. I don't really have a really small smooth beveler, so I'm just gonna use this checkered one. And uh, if anything, it'll catch a lot more antique and shadow in right in there inside of his muzzle a little bit more. And now we're gonna go back here and I'm gonna get just the very tips of the, of any hair that I might have might have missed there. So there's one little wispy one right there. Oops. The very tip of that one. And so now we'll work on his eyes. We're just trying to get all the beveling done, whatever we're gonna bevel. Now I'm gonna take that and just real lightly bevel his upper eyelid towards the eyeball, okay? And then I'm gonna come here and do the same. But you don't wanna go very deep, just, just wanna kinda give it just a little bit of texture around there. And then there's like a little curve right there for just a little bit of a, a wrinkle in that, eye, in that eyelid. And then we'll do the same on this side. So the way you bevel eyeballs, uh, or you know eyes and animals usually the way I do it. I don't, I don't know what everybody else does, but this is how I do it. I do both eyelids toward the uh, the top and the bottom towards the eyeball, and then I bevel the eyeball on the outside. So usually when you look at something, it's going to have you're going to have here you're going to have your upper eyelid line, lower eyelid line, and then an outer line here that's actually the edge of the eyeball so if you look at this one here we've beveled towards the eyeball on this line towards the eyeball on the bottom line this outer line we beveled obviously on the outside of the eyeball so that when we're done that should give it a rounded eyeball look to where it looks like there's an uh, eyeball there so don't get confused and the only reason i bring it up it sounds like, yeah, that's how you would do it. But but when you think about it, like some people, they you know, you'll bevel here, bevel towards the eyeball here, and then they'll come in here and bevel here. Well, now you got a piece of line here that's on the wrong side. And that little bitty bit right there will throw the look of it off, and you'll, you'll, note, and you'll notice that. So you just want to be sure that that little spot right there, that's actually the outer edge of the eyeball. And so we're going to bevel on the outside of it, okay? So we'll go ahead and do that first right here just kind of get that down in there and then we'll come in here and bevel towards the eyeball and like I said don't go very deep real light taps because you don't want to mash all this stuff up we're just trying to give it a little contour and then this little bit of wrinkle right here and then this eye actually has another little wrinkle right there so we'll go ahead and grab that and then there's a little line that comes off the inside of the cheek line and that's just a just a this little line right here is just a that's actually the bottom of his eye socket basically and this outer line is actually the, the back line of his cheekbone that comes up to the back of his jaw so okay and that's all the that's all the beveling right there. So now we start adding some contour and some burnish to it, so to speak. And so the first thing I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna get my bigger pear shader, and you can definitely use any pear shader for this if you've got a one you like using, preferably something with a pointed heel 
um, just because his ear is pointed. See how that fits in there? That's that's what I like. Now these are old, so I don't know if they make one that's actually that pointed. But um, I've got this one here that I use a lot. That's that's that pointed, so we could start with it. But then it's not wide enough to do what we're about to do. So, but but that one's pointed pretty good. And I use this little pear shader quite a bit. And it is a Craft Tool USA. P is in Paul, 703. So if you kind of check out some craft tool stuff, that one might be one to use. And we've also got this other one here that we've used on the uh, leaf here. We've mentioned in another video. And it's a uh, Ivan Taiwan, P is in Paul, 367. So not really sure where that tool came from. but So anyway, we're going to come here. Set that in the tip, but we want a little bit. I'm putting a little bit of clearance right here. Like I'm not all the way out on the tip. I'm just right, right off of it. Kind of like you would a pear shader and a leaf or something. And I'm going to bevel going down the leaf. And then we're going to come over here and do this other one. Now, you've got a leaf in the way there, so I'm going to get my smaller one that will fit in there better. And we'll just kind of, you can walk these things around, but keep that tip where the ear is. Keep that kind of where you need it. But you can wall her around up against that, that leaf if need be. Switch back to my bigger one now that I can fit it in there. So that basically just kind of gets our ear matted down kind of where we want it and so now we'll come over here and we're going to do the same thing to his nostrils here get those matted down and then kind of float them out to where I don't want them to come all the way all the way out flat we want to kind of just really dark inside inside his muzzle here or inside his nostril particularly up against towards the middle just if you look at that photo it's real deep looking right there and then as it gets to the outside of the nostril like coming out here it gets a little lighter there's more shadow up inside there than there is the outside and then of course as it gets to the middle it kind of lightens up a little bit so we got that. And so if you look at him in, on the photo, he does have a, uh, a star in the middle of his forehead. And so I like to sketch that in here. I have it drawn in on the pattern, I believe. But it ju I, just, I did this forelock to where it just peeks out. And so I'm going to go in there and just kind of halfway kind of block in a spot there where it goes. I mean, you just need... A little V or something to where like an offset V of some sort you know to where you kind of got a little spot blocked off so you don't forget about it that that if you that he's gonna have a little lighter spot there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our modeling tool and like I said you can use whatever modeling tool that you have a little spoon or a little ball or something and what I like to do is come right up underneath the eyelid really close to the where the tear duct would be and then make a little line so that it's real real close to the bottom of that eyelid and then we can come in there and just start to shade and manipulate that leather and it's it's kind of like molding clay and so you're just you you're going to burnish with really small strokes and just kind of pull or push the uh, 
the toe of that modeling tool in there to create a little shading. And then we'll come around here and do the same because he's actually got like a little lip in the eyelid. There's not, it's not that, that big. So we're gonna break it up just a little bit and then we'll kind of get a little bit lighter out here. And we'll start floating all this stuff together here in a minute, but I'm just trying to get all our main shadow lines in there. And this is a spot here where the reference photo comes in handy because when you have little areas like this is bulged out with this, so his head actually, where that spot is, the contour of his, I guess that's his skull, would kind of go down and then back out here. And so with that, I want to kind of burnish down that area right there. Now you can use a pear shader here, like I said, but this is, gives you a little bit more control, where, plus you don't get any tool marks. And so that's... That's what we want. And if you've ever noticed on looking closely at a horse, especially when they're chewing, they have a like a dent that goes up and down right there. It's kind of weird while they're chewing. And so what we want to do is be sure that, you know, his eye kind of comes out a little bit right here. And this is where the casing becomes important on figure carving. Because you don't want it too wet because you won't get the burnish. All you'll do is, is um, you'll just kind of mush the leather down and everything, but it won't, it won't burnish. So it's got to be kind of just right and different. And I've had, it's not just Herman Oak, it's, it's different leather, like not just different brands, but one piece is, works at a different level than the other. And so you kind of got to play with that and just, if it's not burnishing, just let it dry a little bit more. If it's not doing anything, it's not squishing down or you can't manipulate the leather, then you've got it too dry, but that's usually a good rule of thumb is just if you're not getting any color. And if you're using like an import leather, or, uh, and I'm not, I don't mean this like that import leathers aren't good. When I'm, some reason, a lot of the import leather that I've tried, it doesn't give you quite the color. So different brands of leather will give you different color um, and different types of Herman Oak will give you color. So you've got to you got to kind of go case by case on what piece of leather you're using. And like I said, this is a piece of 13, 15 ounce Herman Oak skirting leather. And so um, their tooling leather or something like that may, may color a little different. So I might do it at a different water level than I would this skirting. But this stuff here burnishes pretty easily. And so we can begin to get some color. You can see there we've got got some decent color coming coming into that and you can move those shadows over by by just kind of burnishing over the top of them and kind of just keep keep playing with it And then I like to right here in the eyeball, right where that lid is, just kind of push that in there so that it looks round and that it's going under the eyelid. And we can kind of smooth that eyeball out just a little bit. So we got that lid where there's just a little sliver right there and a little shadow. And that's what we want right there. And then you can kind of And if you think, like when we look at that, that eyeball looks a little pointy right here. Like it's sticking out a little too far. So what we can do is come over here and just take the water spot of our spoon here and just push the edge of that. So it's it's really easy to manipulate the the leather once it's 
beveled and everything and if you've got these little spoons you can now it looks a little a little more round and then we've got this weird little line right here and so that's just kind of to get us started so we can come in here and begin to and you can go over the top of it a little bit more and kind of get rid of that line that's all you're doing is just shaping it basically And then if you want something to be darker, then you can, don't necessarily press with your spoon, but you're just going to put it on the leather in just really short movements and, and go different directions too because the leather will burnish a little differently going one way for, to the other. So if it's not burnishing going left to right, go top to bottom. And you'll find that that leather actually has a little bit of a nap to it, just like paper anything else so if one direction doesn't burnish just go the other direction go the opposite direction and you'll begin to start seeing a little more color and sometimes leather will scratch one way and won't scratch the other it'll burnish properly and not scratch this one here if you look if you look really close here we got a little bit of scratching going but not much we can do about it now so I got a little aggressive right there We can begin to fine tune our shadows and just have fun with it. It's just like drawing or anything else. You're just you're just trying to play with the light and cause the different shadows and give everything. Try to give it a 3D look, like that. It's got the contour and texture that you want. So this right here is behind this and this, and so I want to kind of burnish this, let that ear line drop down behind that hair just a little bit, and then I want to burnish this a little bit with a spoon, just so it's darker. And that's going to give us a little shadow effect there. So you're just going to straighten that up a little bit. So there's the eye and base of his ear, and so we can we can use a spoon here on the top of the skull, and really right as that mane gets there, really press hard. Um, you know, not crazy, but you want to get a nice, good burnish. And I'm using the back side of the spoon, so it's got a little bit of a curve. I'm using the back side, not the tip pointed, you know, curving down towards the leather because that'll scratch. So just using the back side of it, and it is uh, causing a lot of color. And that's what we're going for. So you got to decide if you're trying to move leather or you're just trying to color it. And if you're just trying to color it, use the back side. And, uh, and burnish it. So now as you look at that, it's darker here, darker here, and then lighter right here. So that gives this the appearance that it's uh, further out than these two are. And that's what we're kind of kind of going for there. And then what I like to do is once I'm done with an area, like uh, the area around this eye right here. We beveled that with a straight beveler. It looked like, you know, 90 degree angle kind of right there, so we had a little edge. I like to take the back side of the spoon and then just almost set it on a 45 of that and just kind of touch it just a little bit and just get a little, a little roundness to that. You know, to where it looks. 
looks like the edge just kind of wraps around and disappears behind there. I don't want a hard, crisp edge right there. So you can see I just kind of rub the very edge of that just a little bit. And we'll do the same thing to his eyeball. Just be careful not to move it around too much. And how we can do too is right inside there and kind of lift that just a little bit. Just to clean that, that up in there where the where the eyelids are. And then if you want to take a straight one about where the tear duct is, take our straight point. Put it right there and just give it a little push. And that'll kind of give it that little, little effect right there. So now we'll scooch up here where the ear is. I'm gonna turn it upside down here so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to, we'll work on this here since that leaf's over it. And I'm gonna go in there first and kinda rough me in a line, a shadow line. And on a horse's ear, their ears aren't completely cupped, so that line doesn't need to go all the way to the tip. It just needs to kind of go fade out as it gets to the tip. So we're gonna clean up our pear shade area here. And then into our bevel line. same thing here and I like to uh, I like to get a line first with the spoon and then bring it so I have something that I know I'm aiming for and everything on the other side I can kind of squash down a little bit So you can see what I'm saying, these two, if you, this line here goes all the way up and then kind of fades out and then on the inner line it starts lower and kind of comes around. They don't meet up here at the top because now we can kind of clean that ear up right there. And you really never, never make too bad of a mistake um, because you can rub you can rub with the spoon and kind of smooth it out and change it if you need to. That's why I don't like to carve lines like this one. If you notice this line right here, it was going kind of a little too far, and I wanted to make that this piece here look a little thinner. And so I came off that line and kind of came up and changed it. But now we got a carved line in there. So a lot of times lines like that you can really get by with not carving them at all because you can do just this where you burnish a line in there, and that's a lot easier to manipulate and change and uh, make work so you know if you don't have to you don't have to necessarily try to carve every line that's in there that you see on whatever you're whatever you're trying to figure carve I especially do that on belts on a lot of the a lot of the deer and fish and different things I don't carve eyes or anything like that I'm mainly just carving the the silhouette 
and then almost all of the lines I just burnish in there. I don't I don't carve them. I'm going to mist this down just a little bit because it's starting to get a little too dry. And when it comes to misting, you got to be real careful not to get, get it too wet because then you have to wait again for a while. So. so here we'll do the same thing to this ear. Come right close to there, fading it out, and then we'll follow. We went with our pear shader. And we don't see a lot of this ear here, but I'm going to try to get it in there best I can. At least give it the illusion that there's a little line right there. Tip of that ear right there. All right. Now, here we're going to add some shadow right here push that down in there so again use the back side of the spoon short little strokes right there just trying to get a some color change if it's not working one way turn it and do it the other way till it starts to change color picture he's got a lot of little wrinkles that come out right there so we'll turn our tool up on the edge there but we don't have those wrinkles really because he's got a bigger forelock in this image than he does in the photograph so we're just going to add the tail ends of a couple of those wrinkles just to kind of give it the effect there And you almost want these lines to kind of cross right here. a little bit of shadow here where this goes in behind his his eye area there I'm going to leave this middle part a little, a little on the high side or a little bit on the lighter side and darken these two ends of that segment So there's one ear. Like I said, I'm not a master at figure carving. I can get by. So if you want a really good lesson, then Peter Main or Jim Linnell 
or somebody of their caliber are going to be the ones you're going to want to visit with. Uh, Brett Nance is another good one. He's very good at, uh, at doing these, and I believe he does some classes, and uh, uh, he's, he's definitely got a knack for it and a system. And uh, I've actually questioned him on a few things, and he's been gracious enough to answer my questions when I've had one or two on some figure carving stuff in the past, so... Yes, because it's not... It's something I do a lot of now, but I used to never never really get into a lot of it other than skulls and stuff, but... And you can't really screw those up. But that's the ear. So we got one eye. We got one eye down there pretty much. We'll still fiddle with it a little bit as we go along. And then we got one ear. So now we'll work on the other ear. Okay. And so here on this part of the ear here, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of color as it drops down. And we've kind of added some moisture to the leather there. Just like I said, you've got to kind of watch your moisture level to make sure that you're not too terribly dry because it will become hard to get any kind of color but you also don't want it too wet because that will also affect how much color you're getting so it really takes a little bit of practice there to get the, the casing right We'll go ahead and come in here and start working on these eye, this eye on this side. And remember, if you're not getting color um, when you're trying to burnish the leather, if you're not getting color one direction, go the other direction because that grain will have a little bit of a nap to it. And so one way you'll get some color, and the other way it kind of scratches a little more. So you just have to kind of, so you just have to kind of figure that out. Just kind of figure out what's what direction is going and it's not the same across the entire piece either there'll be some spots that you know up or down works better than side to side or something like that so you'll just have to figure that out as you're as you're going along and so like I said be sure and reference that photograph so that you can kind of see where the shadows are and where you kind of need the darker, darker areas and the texture and shape of the figure that you're trying to carve. And here and doing the doing the muzzle here, I'm just gonna kinda lightly burnish me a little line in there for his for his nostrils here. And then we'll begin to get some more shape and everything out of that.
biggest thing here when you're doing these. Just not get in too big a hurry. And you can wait to go super dark in certain areas until you know that's kind of roughly where you want your shading. And then you can come back in and darken everything down as dark as you want it. So like these lines here, I'll kind of halfway put in there. I just put them in just real light, just so I kind of know where it's gonna be and then kind of look at it and see if that's the look that I'm going for. And so going up, usually the horses, you know, if you look at that photograph, there's a line up the bridge of their muzzle here, down their face, that runs up basically to where that star is. So I'm going to begin to, I'm not going to scratch a hard line, I just want to get a little bit of an indention there in the leather, so we can begin to build the contour of that. And so I'm going to put a little bit more water on this. So when it comes to figure carving, if you are tooling the, the thick 13, 15 ounce leather, you can definitely dunk this. And I kind of did that early on just to get a good even case through the leather. But you just want to be careful, like I said, to give it time to, to dry out because we don't want to, we don't want to try to do this when it's too wet. I'm just gonna real lightly keep keep working this little line here. We just want a nice shadow running down the rit the bridge of the nose or muzzle here. And so we'll just kind of continue to shade that in. We don't want a hard line like what we've got here. We just want a shadow beginning to build down the middle of it. And then we'll have it kind of disappear in here since all of this is underneath the hair. We're going to have a little more shadowing effect on this. But we don't want to do the star because we want that lighter. Because it's supposed to represent a white star in his muzzle. I mean in his forehead. Okay. And then the front part of his muzzle in between his nostrils, we need some texture and darkness there because it's more of a flatter spot there so we want a little ridge of lightness right there and then we want the front the two points here of his muzzle we want those fairly light. Look at a horse's muzzle. These are almost like two appendages whenever they're eating. Um, they're able to, they got two muscles here that are giving them the ability to really have control over the, the tip of their nose there as they're grazing or eating. And so we want to make sure that's lighter to kind of make, make it look like these two are further out there than the middle of his muzzle. And so this begins to drop off here, so we're going to add a little more color. Piece of leather's drying out pretty quick, but sometimes, like I said, a different leather, even out of the same batch, is going to react differently. So you've got to kind of maintain your water, water level differently. You just got to keep an eye on it because some of it is, uh, some of it stays wetter longer and Allows you to get the color and some of it you gotta fight the whole time, so.
once I'm kind of happy where, where my initial shading is, I'll push down much harder with this modeling spoon to get some, start getting some good contour and shape to that leather. And if some lines look a little too harsh and too contrasty, you can just lightly rub over the top of them until they lighten up. So anywhere you kind of want it to blend a little more, you can just go back over it. And lightly move that leather around. It's just a long, tedious process of just continuing to work with the leather till you get the look that you want, the shape that you want. Spot here from the, from right above the corner of the eye that kind of comes down to this area in here. So we can see now we're starting to get some pretty good shape and contour to his face. We've got some different shape here to his muzzle. So I'm gonna try to just now kind of blend some of these harsh lines. Cause we want some deep color and some good contour, but we don't want it looking like his face is chiseled out of marble or something. You want it soft. And so we can go through and just lightly begin to tone down some of those changes and those harsher lines just to kind of make them just a little bit more subtle there's some areas you want them pretty pretty contrasted but there's a bunch of them we just want them real subtle like i said i like to ride around the edge there to soften that to where it doesn't look such like a like a hard edge just more more rounded looking I'm sure the figure carvers out there <laughs> may uh, may have better ways of doing this but the way I'm doing it is just how I've kind of figured it out and learned by picking up some things here and there but like I said if you want some teaching from some folks that really know what they're doing. You can certainly find guys out there that are experts in this area. I am not. And you can see kind of how much more control you have with a modeling spoon of some sort, any, any kind of modeling spoon versus like a pear shader. It would be you could do this with a pear shader. You'd have to be really careful because you're not trying to really pear shade. You're trying to just create color and contrast. And it's much easier to do with a pencil type device than it is with a maul or a mallet and a stamping tool. So we're going to call this face good for now. We might come back and touch some of that up and do some more work to his, uh, his face. But now I want to move to his neck here. And really the only thing that we're really going to see here other than just adding some color and right here is this trachea roughly. Um, and so what we want to do is just kind of begin to frame out that that spot there in his neck where his th throat lays. And then this kind of on a, on a horse, you know, obviously this here would be his trachea area. And this is like just a glimpse of the other side of his neck. So this would be his trachea. And then here, his muscle, neck muscle actually comes out, you know. And it, if you've ever, if you look at one from the trachea to the top of the mane, it kind of makes an arc, you know, his neck is shaped. And so 
We want to begin to at least call, create the illusion of that. We don't want to just leave it plain Jane like that. And so we'll real lightly just kind of put in that line there to signify a difference in shape. And then we want a little shadow since it's coming behind his head there. And I'm pushing down fairly hard here because all we're trying to do is get color. There's not a lot of texture right there on his neck. Some pretty good color there in the neck. So now we're gonna to switch to working on the mane. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this really small pear shader and I wanna pear shade these just a little bit to create a little bit of texture here in the hair. Just a little bit of shape. Now we're not gonna pear shade this really heavily like we would uh, a vine or something like that. We're just trying to just cause a little bit of darkening in there. Because once we add our, our hair lines in there and all that stuff, it's gonna be hard to, to get any color. And so we wanna do all of our shading basically right now. Here and we'll shape up the tips of these with our pointed side of our modeling spoon. Shape just like we did his face. I want to add some some volume here. Because it's not flat. I mean, it means not it's not just a flat slab of hair or something like that. I mean it's it's got shape to it and contours. Just like everything else. And these can just be really random, just kind of have fun with it. We got a little confused piece right here. If you look real close, at least on mine, um, this is part of his ear and this is part of his mane and they look at the same height. Um, it, this actually looks further back because it's really dark and this is really light. So I'm gonna come in here and really push that mane into the background right there. 
just so that we get a good contrast from one piece to the other. And I'm going to do the same around the eye because this mane is much further back than the eye. And so that's a lot of what, just like in any art, if you're drawing or painting or anything else, is trying to delineate what's in the background, what's in the foreground, and being sure you've done a good job of that so that the realism comes through. A lot of times what makes something look funny, if you look at it and you think, man, it just doesn't look right and I can't figure out why, a lot of times that's what it is. It's just something really small like that. It's just there's some confusion in the brain when it looks at, when you look at it that's causing it to, like, it doesn't seem possible, you know? Like, that just doesn't seem like it. it's correct, and you can't figure out why. A lot of times it's just, it's either not, not in the right space, three-dimensionally, or it's of wrong proportion, or something, something really small. All right, so we've got all the hair. Now we're ready to texture the hair. I'm gonna take my dentist looking tool thing here, sculptor deal. You can also do it if you do have a, another type of modeling spoon, like a uh, like this Peter Main tool or something else. As long as it's got a point on it, you can come in here and scratch these lines. I like to use this one. It's the one I use on feathers a lot just because the lines are a little smaller and I can kind of control them a little bit more. But here's where you'll go in there and make lines. And I try to follow the contours of the shape of hair. So whatever the segment of hair is, I try to just trace that. And just kind of follow that to give it a little bit of movement in there with every single strand, you know. And I just scratch them in there so you can see there. Now they're just they're just little scratches and they don't all have to start here and end over here you can just kind of scratch them in there give them some movement because we're going to do something else too here so this isn't a final deal we'll put some decorative cuts to to further texturize that but you can see now why we did all the shading and the the shading first as far as getting some shape and stuff because if we'd have done this first and then try to shade we would have to come back and do this again Up here at the top, which is the top of his mane, I like to come kind of at a curve because it's coming over the top of his neck and falling to the side. And so I like to kind of just that edge and kind of come at a little bit of an arc right there. scratch up in here in between the because to me that's that's going to be main area too inside those little background pieces that we decided not to background so i'm just going to add a little little texture in there it'll catch antique and kind of show a little bit more that that's that's actually his main behind there we didn't just forget to background it so we'll go through and put a few that are a little heavier so I'm using the back side now I flipped it when I was doing the other ones I was doing them this way and now I'm gonna flip it where it's pointed up kind of and put some harder lines or you can switch to the modeling spoon with a point and do the same thing you don't want to add quite as many but do a few that are a little harder more bold So now you can see the contrast that we've got between the mane and the body, just with all those little scratches. So now we'll grab our swivel knife. I'm gonna start here at the top of the mane first. And then what I wanna do is come here and put a few cuts 
just really long just a few like that right there and that's going to start our kind of breakup of our deal let me move this light okay sorry about that i had to move that light because i didn't notice you're getting a lot of shadows and i apologize for that but here you'll be able to see a little bit easier but i start up here and just kind of start bringing that so just a few cuts right there and that's going to begin to accentuate the top of that mane right there a little bit and we'll do the same here in the forelock we'll start up here and just real long some light some heavier just kind of following the contour of the forelock and when we come here on the tips we're going to do it much like i do in the feather video we'll start here and follow that out you see how that creates a little bit of a a loose piece so it creates this loose piece here and here that's what we want because it's it looks like hair or feather you know anytime you're doing anything like that you want that separation there and this is I don't know, I enjoy doing this part, but it just takes a little practice to kind of get to where you can create the effect that you're going for. But now those chunks of hair are turning into looking more like a collection of individual hairs, and that's what we're after. So you can see the difference there now. We've got quite a few pieces that are fairly loose there you know and then you can come in here and real lightly add some more just kind of accent lines And so that's our main there. That one there is pretty long. And then if you want, you can come in here and scratch in just a few little extra ones here and there. Just because it's not obviously perfect, you've got little lines coming off. Little individual hairs that come off of here every once in a while. And don't overdo this part, but it, it can add a little, a little cool look about it. And then if you want, you can do one or two that are real light with your swivel knife. When it comes to hair, the more random, the better. But you have to be careful so that you don't end up with spaghetti hair. Because that is uh, really unnatural looking and funny looking. So <laughs> try not to do that too much. And then we can go through and just do any final touch-ups on his muzzle. And there's probably a lot further you can go with this. But I'm probably going to end this right about here on him just because I'm not, you know, I can mess with one of these for hours and hours and hours just toying with it till I get all the contours and all the shapes that I want and everything. And I'm pretty happy with the way he looks for this demonstration. And, um, you know, I don't know much else that I would do other than continuing to tweak and work on it, you know. And I don't want to make this video super, super long, but I think that gives you enough to kind of give you an idea of some of the things that I do in a uh, in a figure carving type thing. And so now we'll go through and we'll do all of our decorative cuts on our floral real quick. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to take my beveler 
And just as a last little touch up, I'm gonna bevel the inside of this muzzle just a little bit, just so that it catches plenty of antique when we finish this. Just so that it looks, looks like it's up there good. We're gonna do the same to his ears too. Go ahead and just lightly bevel just down in there and that V just a little bit. And that's gonna catch, catch a little antique, especially with that checkered beveler. It'll catch a little antique down in here and then make that look like it goes down into his ear canal. And then same thing here with his muzzle. But that's it guys, that's my figure carving demonstration. We'll probably do some more, some different types of things and stuff, but that'll give you a good idea of kind of what's going on, um, you know, and how we kind of do this. And so you can kind of take that and, and go from there. Be sure and, and reach out to those guys that are really, really good in it. If you ever have a chance to attend a class on doing some true figure carving, which I would like to also in the future, um, for because they do some amazing stuff. The guys that really know what they're doing when it comes to this. And it's well worth the money to kind of see exactly how the experts do it and kind of what they go through because it is a process and it's quite a bit different than just tool and floral. And so I've kind of just had to pick up what I could here and there. I learned how to do it good enough for, for our shop. And so it's one of the things I'm constantly trying to learn and get better at. But so that's the end of this video. Um, if you haven't, if this is the first time you've seen this, you can go back to the first video. There's three so far. This is the third video and, uh, you can get the pattern for this and follow along from video one. There's also a link in the description of this video, or if you would like to get this pattern and practice tooling this and kind of give it a shot, you sure can. But we're going to go ahead and do a fourth video for this month since we've got time and I'm going to do a finish technique on this that we haven't done yet. And I think I'm going to do dyed black background. So we'll dye the background black and then we'll do an antiquing and I'll show you how I do that. But there'll be one more video in this series and it'll be the finishing of this as far as antiquing and stuff because that's when these figures really come alive. So, But I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, be sure and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.